Today we have a live print from Citizen Robotics in Detroit. This is the first nonprofit organization that I featured. Their goal is to use these technologies on construction sites to alleviate the physical demand of labor and enable women and children to work on job sites. They're using a Tilikum printer that you may recognize from 20 Additive Manufacturing and they were able to source the robotic arm used from a manufacturing plant in Chicago. Located in Detroit, Citizen Robotics has a fascinating opportunity to bring back the manufacturing prowess of what was once the most wealthy city in the world. I got the chance to stop by during this print and interview their different team members which we'll get to in a minute. These pieces are going to be used as an interior wall structure in the warehouse that will serve as a break room. 3D printed construction has all kinds of possibilities and we're only seeing the tip of the iceberg when it comes to design, material capabilities, and even legislative things like permitting and insurance. If you're captivated by 3D printed construction but don't know where to start, check out my course How to 3D Print a House at the link in the description below. Without further ado, let's get to the interviews and print footage. Bear in mind this is an active construction site so the audio is pretty rough. Big thanks to the Citizen Robotics team for allowing me to stop by. It's always nerve-wracking doing a new print and even more so with the cameras on so I appreciate their bravery and transparency in allowing me to film on this day. Now without further ado, let's meet the team. Hey, I'm Tom Woodman. Welcome to Citizen Robotics. Here we're printing a wall segment from our break room, our future room that's right back over here. My name is Fernando Bales. I'm the Build Lab Manager here at Citizen Robotics. Hi, I'm Evelyn Woodman. I'm the co-founder of Citizen Robotics. So you can see here that we are in process of building our own 3D printed ADA compliant bathroom. And then on either side we'll have office space as well as a break room over here. On this side we'll have a feature wall curved on this section between these two parts of our crane. Um, and it'll be a textured feature wall, hopefully also helping with our acoustics in the break room. Like most concrete slabs, the floor of this building is not very flat. Citizen Robotics was able to print a formwork to pour concrete in and get a nice flat smooth print bed surface customized to the shape of their printer, which is able to print in a U-shaped volume as the robotic arm can pivot to both sides of the uh, trailer that it's resting on. This is a nine-year-old robot out of a manufacturing plant someplace in uh, in Chicago. The robot and the rail came from a uh, you know used robot dealer. When a manufacturing plant has reached the end of life with the assembly line, with the product they're making with the assembly line, I mean, as far most of the companies don't care what happens to the robot after that. They've already capitalized the entire assembly line, and so they would they would throw them in the dumpster. But then uh, 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 these guys uh, salvage these used robots, and then they refurb them if necessary, and they resell them. So there's a whole healthy market of uh, used robots for sale. Tons of life left uh, in this robot still. Um, we're just using it to do something something else that it knows how to do. Likely this was a welding robot, so it was welding the same points over and over and over again. Of course, what we make it do is something unique every single time, a, a unique robot path based on our 3D model, uh, but, but that's what's happening with this. Just to um, double check our water content. So I'll lay my spatula, I'll let it turn over, Pull it up. Right, and that off the Thank you. Here we weigh it. And then we'll microwave it for five minutes, weigh it again, and see the water lost. So this is where we'll log our water test throughout a print day. We'll start with uh, what time it is. Um, this way we can refer back to various points in the day. And if we have a failure, hopefully not, we'll be able to refer back to this and just know all of our variables. We'll weigh it, we'll uh, microwave it for five minutes, weigh it again, and from there we can figure out the weight loss and the water percentage. At the beginning of the day, we'll log our temperature and humidity just so that we know everything that's going on and we'll check that throughout the day. My name is Lucas Seguire. Uh, today I'm operating the pump. Um, 
And what I'm doing is just making sure everything runs smoothly, monitoring the pressure we have in the hose, monitoring the water content, monitoring the speed at which we're pumping concrete out, uh, and just communicating with uh, Fernando running the print. Different things can go bad. We can have a clog somewhere in the hose, in which case the pressure builds and we have to stop everything abort, uh, pull the hose out, unclog it real quick somehow, uh, either a piece of rebar or just shooting water into it. Uh, the mix can get too wet and we can collapse the print. It can get too dry uh, and thin out the print bead. Um, yeah, a lot of stuff can go wrong. So I'm forming this ladder reinforcement uh, to match our curve, just to give it a little extra support. I don't like that one, so laying it on our print just to give it a little extra uh, strength. And as you can see, it's not it's done by hand, so it takes a little bit of shaping. The mission is automation, but it still requires a human touch. The people are the most important part of some of the fine tuning and also the research and development this industry needs to push it forward. My name is Tiso Tate. I'm a carpentry working for the company JL Russell Associates. And basically what we do is at the Citizen Robotics, they print these walls and then my, me and the company I work for, we put them together. How does that go? Is it easy? Uh, heavy, but pretty, not, not too hard. Yes, then it's a learning experience, so it's new to us all, so pretty cool. The Citizen Robotics mission is to bring robotic construction techniques and a digital tool set to the construction industry to lower the cost of housing. Um, we'd also like to bring young people and women into one of the fastest aging industries we have. We have not yet made our full raise, which is $1.2 million, and that would allow us to hire a development director and program director in order to create the curriculum and training programs enable to enable this new workforce. We are always accepting donations on our website, citizenrobotics.org, and we're also running a GoFundMe to help fund the first 3D printed home in Detroit. We also have t-shirts for sale, and we'll have some new things available on our website starting in September. That was great. Definitely the best. Every print is meaningful for a startup. Uh, this printed wall segment we're doing now where it's 11 foot long, it's, a, it's an acoustically uh, modified pattern intentionally designed to uh, uh, create dispersion uh, for sound in the room. And if it goes really well, what could it bring in the future? And if it goes well, it shows people that uh, um, uh, that you don't have to treat rooms acoustically after the fact. You can just design it in with intent from the start of construction. Uh, for us as Citizen Robotics, it means that uh, someone might see that wall segment, really uh, un begin to see the future because through the lens of our wall segment, and then uh, actually donate on that behalf.